Hi, this is Wendy at Wendy Sees. You'll see that my wetsuit's hanging up to dry today. So what are we going to be seeing today? I want to share with you a fabulous resource I found literally by just help. I need help on the internet. Um, a great group of folks at Getting Nerdy has a copywritten the product called Cyan Structables 3D the section models. And I do dissections as part of our marine science program at my school. However, there are times when I don't want to. I'd rather do something a little different. And then I got to thinking, hey, this is a great resource for not just a marine science teacher, but for a lot of different areas. So what am I talking about? First of all, when you buy a Science Structable 3D, it is a paper product that comes, oh, that's very difficult to see, that comes like this. Um, it is all kinds of things that you cut out. Um, these are parts of a paper shark. But they have lots of different patterns. And what you're going to do is you're going to cut out those pieces. And so when you're done, you kind of have a mess that looks like this. But here's where it's fun. This is a lot like putting together a puzzle. So if you just like doing puzzles, you'll love these. If you are a um, science teacher or you know one, ask if they'd be interested in some of these. For example, there are... 20 or so different patterns. Um, you have them for sponges, clams, squid. Let me show you. This is a completed sponge. Absolutely awesome, showing that the sponge reproduces by budding and spreading out. They reproduce actually in several different ways, but it also shows you the interior portions of the sponge. Great teaching tool, but also something really neat that could be matted or framed or um, displayed. Probably what I'd like to do next time I work on these with my students is I'd laminate the colored copies first. Um, I love the fact that these come with what each part does, names it, what color it is, tells you more about it. Um, the science structables also come with lots of teacher resources. You can get this blank where the students have to do it. This is just a little clam. I love the fact that both sides of the shell are included and all of the different parts, including the, the ductor muscle. Um, it's just awesome how much detail these go into. So what's great is before we dissect, we can look at it like this, um, learn the parts, kind of know what we're looking for, or we can do this instead of dissection. Um, what if you're trying to explain to students what's inside a starfish? You mean there's something inside a starfish? Starfish are awful thin. They actually do have a lot of neat parts. They have reproductive structures, digestive structures, and then structures of the move. Um, this is the squid. You have a male and female squid that you can show the students. Um, I love the fact that all of this just opens up. You can see everything. Um, I love the tentacles. This is my favorite group. You can tell I'm, I'm, a, I'm a cephalopod fan. Um, and then finally, the, the last one that I have already done is our perch here. And what I think I'm going to do next year is I'm actually going to have my students do the perch and the dart so that they can compare the internal structures of both. I sort of assumed that my students already knew the parts of a fish. Um, lots of kids go fishing in this area and that sort of thing. I was wrong. They know that they eat fish. They really don't understand at all the parts. So let me get back to the shark for you for a second and show you just some of the amazing things that, that you can do as you put this together. First of all, it has a base, and so you can put the base on a piece of more um, sturdy paper, like construction paper or cardstock. Um, and then you have a head, a middle, and a tail. And so what I've done is I've tried to take my parts as I 
go through them and separate them into head, middle, or tail. Um, one of the things you also get to choose is whether you're going to do a female shark or a male shark. Um, they have different fins and um, structures. So I tell my students just to pick one and then they only have to cut and color one of those parts instead of all of them. So then I like to start separating my parts into what where they might go. Um, so these are all things that go in the middle. This would go in the tail. You've already got the head up here, but in the head there are some gills and there are the tail fin and another part of the tail fin. I just like to organize a little bit and then the students and I start building these together a little bit. They love this activity. Um, anyway, what's great about the way Getting Nerdy has made these different parts is they have listed things that just go together. So this is T, so T1 goes right on top. There may be a T2, a T3. Um, and as you put this together, they have great directions in their, their um, packet. You just start putting things on top of each other and building from there. And so by the time that you're done, you have really built an amazing example of what's going on inside this animal. So um, these, let me see, these tabs, you just bend them and then glue them where they where they belong. This is SB6, it goes on SB6, that sort of thing. Um, these are RGs, so that's a right gill. And so this goes right here where it says right gill. You glue those down. When you're done, you have all of the parts inside and out of a shark. So I'm gonna move this over. and show you a female shark that's completed. So this is what she looks like, completed on the ventral or the belly side. And this is what she looks like completed on the dorsal side. Um, so she's got some fins, including her caudal fin here. And then on the ends, we'll go back to the other side, on the ventral side, we can actually start opening up cavities and talking about what we find first. Shark skin is very unique, so you have a discussion about that. As you open up the skin, their skin feels like sandpaper. Um, you will see the muscle layer. And so if you want to teach muscles, you can teach muscles. Um, inside that is the circulatory system with the heart. Their heart is similar to ours similar. These are the gills. So water comes in through the mouth and goes over the gills. And then as we move down, you can open up the abdominal cavity. There's your abdominal muscles. Most of the shark is taken up with liver. The liver actually is very oily and it helps with buoyancy. You can see the gallbladder and as you keep moving, you can see the stomach here. The stomach has lots of folds. And as we move through the digestive system, this is the large intestine, which has a really neat shape. Um, and I love this 3D representation. It helps with increasing surface areas so the shark can digest more. This happens to be a female. Um, the way you know, lots of reproductive or structures. And she only has tail fins that look like this. And a male shark, and I do have one put together, and a male shark, you're going to see the claspers. So his reproductive structures are different. But I think this is a wonderful way to show anyone the parts of the the animal. It's a great arts and crafts type activity as well. It's beautiful. I think they're all beautiful. When you're done, you've got some really neat things to display. Um, I could see a dive guide holding this up to talk to people about the different types of fins or how you tell a male or female shark from each other. I could see an environmental educator using these to teach children, families, adults about the different animals that might be in their environment. 
there are so many possibilities. Um, I have a student who has a seven-year-old brother who just loves everything ocean. Um, he went crazy over his sister's paper shark. Um, so I think anyone can can actually manipulate and look at and enjoy this resource. Um, you can find Science Structables 3D dissection models at Teachers Pay Teachers. You can also find them on Carolina Biological. I'll put those resources in my, my um, trying to get the ocean vibe guys the dogs are not letting me come here. Come here. maybe we need to make a 3d model of tilly yes and bells bells is being left out but she's too big for me to pick up anyway um i think that these are great resources and i think there's something that you might want to see